Who wants to win their games in two minutes? Well, thankfully, ProView Jizz is back at it, and boy, do we have one of the sickest, most aggressive early games you will see. And the surprising thing is, is that this happened at Worlds between Fnatic and the Korean team Hanwha Life. And in today's video, I'm going to teach you the challenger jungling essentials and how you can go about crushing the opposition in your games, just like Bwipo does in this one. So buckle up and let's get into it. So thanks to my ProView subscription, we can understand exactly how Bwipo was able to dominate this early game. And it starts with what he buys. So he buys an Ember Knife right off the bat, and this is 350 gold, so he has 150 spare. Now he spends 75 of this on a Control Ward, and in your games I would highly recommend buying a Health Potion just to be kind of safe, but the important thing here is you buy a Control Ward and you put it in the Pixel Brush on the side of the map you are going to invade. This is very important as you will see in about a minute's time, because the enemy jungler will probably look to counter what you do by invading your own side of the map. So this Control Ward allows us to see if that move happens, at which point you can notify your team to converge on the enemy jungler and good things are going to happen. So this just protects the invade. So that's the first important detail that control was. The second is that this level one for Fnatic is actually really strong. With Graves, who's a ranged champion, and then Braum and his passive, it makes it very scary to play against at level one. So in your games, you don't have to do it on Graves. Just try to make sure you do this with a strong level one trio of jungle and bot lane. Now, what you're going to do, guys, is stand in this pixel brush until about 1 minute 15, and then you're going to move down to this bottom tri brush. Now, it's very important in your games to coordinate this with your bot lane, so make sure you're pinging for assistance and pinging on the way. This is essential because if the enemy bot lane is in this tri brush, you will outnumber them 3 to 2, but you won't if your AD carry and support don't help you. Now after shaking this tri brush, no one is in it, obviously, so Bwipo is going to run to the enemy red buff, and it's important here to actually path hugging this wall. You can see the tip of this tree here, this is actually fog of war. The enemy team will only see Bwipo when he gets around this tip of the tree. This allows you to be in stealth for a little bit longer and you will definitely catch opponents out who are leashing in this brush. And in your games as well, ask one of your teammates to ward the red brush. This is really important as well because if anyone is actually leashing in here, you can catch them out. So just type in chat ward and ping the actual brush itself. Now as we can see, Lee Sin hasn't actually started here and the enemy bot lane is missing. So Whippo immediately starts this, there's no reason to wait. Now while doing the red buff, it's very important to leash it actually into this brush. This is never going to be warded by the enemy team if you haven't seen them. So by dragging Dragging the red buff into this brush, you're dragging it into Fog of War. And when Lee Sin comes around the corner, he can't actually outsmart you because he doesn't know what HP the red buff is on. So Bwipo steals this red buff, and what happens here? This is the start of the snowball. So this red buff is a massive advantage, so Bwipo goes ham on Lee Sin. Now, a little important mechanic here, Bwipo queues instead of auto-attacking. This is because when he auto-attacks, the Lee Sin might be further away, and the detonation of his Q wouldn't actually hit the Lee Sin. And after this, Lee Sin is on 200 HP, and then Bwipo makes one of the wackiest plays of all time. Well, that's what it looks like anyway, because he flashes onto the Lee Sin. Now, there's no way he kills the Lee Sin here, but the reason he does this is because it cuts Lee Sin off from his topside jungle, and Whippo, also by flashing, only takes one tower shot, because sometimes running in between these towers, you will take two tower shots, and if this was the case, Whippo would probably be on less than half HP, and it becomes a little more sketchy. But the actual play itself, because he has such a massive HP advantage here, to flash over to Lee Sin's topside is unreal. One of the best players I've seen, and so many people in that situation are probably just going to run off to their blue buff, to their gromp. When you have a serious advantage, guys, like this in the HP and buff department early game, be obsessed with stomping the enemy jungler. So Bwipo at this point takes walls because he's so healthy and Lee Sin isn't, and then takes his gromp and blue buff as well. Now, while he's doing this, you're going to notice that Lee Sin right here is pathing over this pixel brush. This is where the control wood is, and this is why it's so helpful. This notifies not just Bwipo, but who else? The bot lane and the mid lane, and they converge onto the Lee Sin and get get his flash. And Lee Sin after this just has one camp. That's Rantus. Whippo has 16. Now one thing you can do as well as we can see here, when Whippo is auto attacking this Gromp, when it gets close to quarter HP, you can actually hit the blue buff and leash it into yourself. And if I draw a line from this wall up into this one, this is where really you should stand to be able to do both camps at the same time. This just saves time. But while Whippo is doing this, I would love to see him look in the top lane because you never know. This cannon might be 200 HP, but we have to understand that this is pro play and he is in comms with his top laner who will hopefully be saying that Kennen is not diveable, do not come top. Now, after Bwipo has taken these camps, what would you do? Because we're 10 or 15 seconds or so being away from the top scuttle crab, and we also have Krugs, Red, and Raptors up. But remember, who are we obsessing ourselves over? The most important detail in this game is the enemy jungler Lee Sin. And because he's on the bottom side of the map, we don't even need our top side, like it's so unimportant. So what Bwipo is going to do, he's going to swing by mid, and while getting Chovy's flash, which is just icing on the cake, he's going to go to this bottom crab and deny 
by Lee Sin again. So remember guys, it's not just about getting your own camps and full clearing. Denying the enemy jungler is 10 times more impactful. And after getting this crab, Whippo has 20 CS and he's four camps up already. This is a huge advantage, obviously, but we still have to know how to actually finish this game off because there is a big mistake coming up soon. But what Whippo does after this is fine. He's going to do his blue and his gromp. And after doing so, he's close to getting his serrated dirk, which is his first major item. Now, it's very important, guys, that when you do hit these gold timers, you back as soon as you can to buy that item and get back on the map ASAP. So Whippo here can definitely do his walls and recall. That's probably the most consistent play. But again, he's abiding by this concept of obsessing with the enemy jungler. So when Chovy dies in the mid lane, this opens up resources on the enemy side of the map. So Raptors become more accessible. So Whippo, because he wants to make a play there, pings on the way. This is very important. And Ryze helps him out and they end up getting the small Raptors. And because of this little gold income, Whippo has his gold for Serrated Dirk. So he backs and he buys. And in the CS department between these junglers, it is 31 to 10. Ridiculous to be honest at a world's game. And you guys can do exactly the same. Now Whippo out of base runs to his top side. Remember, all these camps are still here, right? The Red, the Krugs, the Raptors. And I should note here that lots of people in solo queue are probably going to gank this cannon. The reason this is risky is because we saw Lee Sin pathing towards the top side earlier and set is also very low. So making a play here, if this does end up being a 2v2, Graves and Set are still probably going to lose despite Whippo's huge lead. So if Whippo is just going to do Krugs down to his Raptors, down to his Wolves, and this also pass him towards Dragon, which is an important objective to consider. Now while doing Wolves, we still have to think about the enemy jungler. Lee Sin no doubt has cleared his topside camps, so the only real place he should be in terms of resources is the bottom side of the map. His red buff is spawning somewhat soon, and his Krugs are probably on respawn as well. So if Whippo was to start Dragon here, it might be a little risky considering that Chovy has priority in the mid lane, and also the enemy bot lane has priority as well. So what Whippo is going to do instead is gank. That's really the only thing he can do, and by putting a bit of pressure in this bot lane, he actually gives them a chance to get priority, but unfortunately, they don't get it. But still, the player is fine, but this, guys, is where the game really turns, and Whippo completely throws his massive lead. So whenever we do these objectives that are on the map, in other words, from the river onto the enemy side of the map, we have to consider the other enemy champions. It's not just a 1v1 at this point. So I mentioned earlier how Chovy has priority and the enemy bot lane has priority as well. So we have to consider what's happening in the bottom right of your screen on the map. We can see that Lee Sin is moving up and you can also see that Aphelios and Thresh have the first move and so does Chovy from the mid lane. So Bwipo starting the crab is fine because he can do it very quickly, but this is the cardinal mistake. He ends up pushing the crab towards the bottom side of the map towards three enemy champions. What he should be doing is pushing this towards Chovy and escaping via this alleyway towards Rise. That would be absolutely fine and he would 100% get the crab and survive whatever comes at him. But unfortunately, he just doesn't respect the map enough and ends up dying. Now, I'm going to pause it here because Lee Sin makes a really five head play. If Whippo was able to move just a little bit more to his right, he can guarantee this flash above this tree. But unfortunately, because Lee Sin blocks his path, he has to flash here, which is no real distance at all. And Thresh flash flays. Chovy comes in with the ultimate and Whippo dies. So this is a massive mistake from Whippo and it's the only mistake he's made all game. But it just goes to show you, you can have the most perfect early game, but one mistake will undo everything. But even after this, Whippo still does well. He now passed towards his Gromp because it's the only resource on his side of the map. And while passing towards Bot, you can see this is something every jungler has to do. He actually looks at Bot Lane, which is close to his Gromp. And because this Bot Lane is now fighting, what does Gromp mean in this situation? Nothing, right? So Whippo is going to run to this Blast Cone, get over it, and he eventually picks up the kill onto the enemy Thresh. So looking at your map, guys, that the lane that is close to the camp you are clearing is essential. If you do not do this, you are going to miss out on kills. And if you look at Gromp, it's still there. It's not going anywhere. So after getting this kill, Whippo helps shove out this bot lane. And to be honest, they're still in the game. And then he goes to his Gromp and farms this. So they're still in the game Fnatic at this point, but this early game from Whippo against the Lee Sim was so cool to watch. And honestly, it was a jungle made it made me very happy. So take these tips with you guys. Hopefully this gave you an insight into how the best junglers in the world operate on the Rift. And as always, if you did enjoy the video, remember to leave a like down below. Also remember to hit that subscribe button on your way out. And also make sure to check out the Game Week website linked in the description and comment section. If you want to improve, if you want to hit your peak before the season ends, we have all the resources you need from courses, guides, font analyses, everything you need. Trust me, just sign up. And until tomorrow's upload, this has been the Jizz,